There's a style of performance in voice acting, and you can't tell where the announcer took a breath because the script is written in such a way that you're in such a way that you're following the announcer's stream of consciousness, and when the announcer runs out of breath as he's performing the runs out of breath as he's performing the script, he backs up a little bit and continues on continues on, and the Pro Tools editor removes the gaps and edits the pieces together so it together so it sounds like the performer never actually takes a breath, even though of course even though of course we know he does because no one can go on talking indefinitely. I will turn this off. There's a style of performance in voice acting, and you can't tell where the announcer took a breath because the script is written in such a way that you're in such a way that you're following the announcer's in such a way I don't think I need my separation grabber for this. I'm just going to use my regular trimmer. Let's make a cut there and trim this guy to in such a way, which should be somewhere in here. That's because the script is written in such in such a way that you're... Okay, I need to zoom in just a little bit. That's because the script is written in such... In, trim off to about here. Because the script is written in, in such a way that you have two ends. Let me grab the second in and get rid of him. The script is written in such a way that you're uh, better the first time. If I do this and get rid of that, really have to zoom in here to see what I'm doing. Get there and there. Let's see what I got. The script is written in, in such a way. Mm, is this the in? And in, in such, yeah, that's the in. So let's get rid of that whole in. Let's actually get rid of it all the way to there. The script is written in such a way that I need a little bit more, don't I? Maybe we move this guy back just a little bit, maybe to there. The script is written in such a way, that, and let's crossfade that. I think we got it. The script is written in such a way that good there. I don't think I'll do the whole thing, but you get the idea. And when the announcer runs out of breath as he's performing the, runs out of breath as, runs out of breath, runs is right there in the little valley, and I will chop off to here. Command E, remember, for edit. Delete the difference. Consciousness, and when the announcer runs out of breath, as the timing is good. Let's do our little crossfade there and try and smooth that edit. Consciousness, and when the announcer runs out of breath, mm, not quite. This needs to go back just a smidgen, I think. And then crossfade. Consciousness, and when the announcer runs out of breath, so you get the idea here. It's a very interesting production method, and it's really captivating when someone keeps talking and never runs out of breath. It's used a lot in commercials, and that's how you do it. Philosophically, do you always take out the breaths, or do you always leave them in? If the announcer goes, there's a style of performance. Hopefully your announcer takes the big breath and leaves you a little room. The rookie mistake is to go, there's a style of performance, right? Take the big breath and immediately start talking. Good announcers will leave you a little gap. Even if there's not much of a gap, you can usually get in there. And lip smacks. I say philosophically, you always take them out. Breaths, you may want to leave in depending on if it's a perfume commercial and you hired the voiceover person because they have this breathy voice. That's a case where you leave it in. But lip smacks are almost always wrong and you want to take them out. Like there's a little lip smack right there. They don't show up very big, but they're easy to spot. We don't know what it is, but we don't like it. We like talking. We don't like little lip smacks. There's the breathless way of putting together an announcer script.